Hi, it's Mark Hazel. I'm here at Vox Days Ticino, and I'm speaking with Emilia Chardi, um, who has just recently, this, this morning, given a session, um, the top 10 golden rules of mobile UX, I believe it was. Yeah, exactly. It was a nice speech, I hope, for who has attended. And it just went through the, the 10 uh, yeah, rules, or, or, or let's say they are more like guidelines that you can follow to, to make sure that you are doing it the right way. I mean, when it comes to mobile UX, it is a very competitive scene and you really want your app to stand out. So it's really important to, to check on uh, uh, every element, every detail of your user experience to assess that you're not living on the table uh, some good opportunities. Sure. So I, I, I came into the room um, and I saw some of the slides, but the talk was in Italian, so okay. you'll have to excuse uh, the fact that I didn't um, catch everything. But, I mean, if you were to give um, three pieces of advice um, on UX, uh, what would be your, your golden um, nuggets, as they were? The first one is to uh, respect the user's time because you really want that your uh, UX is smooth and every task that you really want to uh, make the user able to accomplish should be really smooth, streamlined, so that his time is really respected. And the second thing you really want to do is to care about uh, you know, the ergonomy of your app, because we are seeing uh, um, a constant increase. Let's hope that this is going to stop now or, or for the size of mobile phones. And this poses some challenges. Uh, even uh, Apple has recogni recognized uh, this problem, uh, introducing the reachability double tap on the home button. And yes, because uh, uh, if you use with just one end your device, as you are uh, probably accustomed, uh, when we had just an iPhone 4 or maybe an Android S2, uh, we could just basically, uh, you know, keep it in one hand and doing everything and do everything with just with the thumb. But now it is not more possible. St recent studies show that we uh, tend to use more and more our devices in a cradled position. Uh, so uh, we should take this into account to to work. Uh, um, to make uh, everything smooth, even in the situations where our users are, uh, are not going to use it in a cradle position. And this means uh, uh, be able to also measure what your users are doing. And this would be my third real uh, strong suggestion. You have to measure what your users are doing. Uh, we are in the lean uh, you know, economy, in the lean uh, era and you really want to uh, make analytics flow from uh, the real thing that is happening on, on the market with your app. You want to track them and you want to react properly, both to discover potential UX problems and to, you know, provide the strategic guidance for the future of your app. Yeah. It's a, we're, we're in interesting times, really, because recently the, the explosion of responsive design. Um, and it seems that that's delivered fairly ubiquitous kind of universal experiences across device types. But as you say, as um, phones are getting bigger um, and are, are just the, the way that we're holding them and therefore our consumption habit um, and, and physical behaviors have changed, um, do you see that, that that's going to have an impact on um, the way that we design uh, with UX in mind? Yes, of course, or at least it should, yeah. because uh, uh, we have to follow our users everywhere they go. Yeah. And we want them to, to be at their ease. We want that basically the experience of our apps uh, blends with the context in which the users are really uh, immersed. So. If we can measure what they are doing, for example, if the uh, session time is small, but probably they uh, frequently open the app during their day, then probably their uh, fruition of our app is probably uh, a casual fruition, probably uh, in a waiting time during while you are uh, 
for example, just waiting for the bus or the train or, or maybe in a lift, I don't know. So for a user that uh, uh, can connect with your app in, in small bits, this means something. This means probably that your app has a kind of content that has a quite small consumption and makes a sense to fill this, uh, you know, this little five minutes that you have in, in your day. And you have to design with this in mind because it means that he is not at home, he is not comfortable probably, he is not seated on his sofa, so he cannot cradle or for example, use a landscape mode with uh, with the two hands and use you know the full real estate, uh, reaching with his thumbs everywhere. Probably is not in that condition. So we should design with this in mind. So for me, bad UX makes me want to throw my phone directly at a window or at somebody, preferably the product designer. Um, but um, it seems to me the more we nail UX. Um, the more maybe products will be designed around or, or the impact is going to be so much greater because yeah, we, we, can, we can take the data um, and we can put it into um, contextual experiences now. Um, so how do you see um, the advent of great UX really impacting future product development? Well, of course, this is a difficult question. We already are seeing a, so many... Uh, you know, cool apps, I mean, apps that really can interpret the, these new modern times. I mean, we feel comfortable with the Spotify. Yeah. We feel that Spotify has nailed in it, sorry. And, and this is not by chance. Uh, everything is evolving, it is so smooth, and the, the technology opens uh, gates that uh, just a few years ago were not even imaginable. And this is uh, really something that... Um, you know, shows in the app that uh, are coming uh, out on the market. This is a new exciting frontier. We should embrace it and uh, really try to interpret what people want. And we are, we are these people, basically. We are all users of, and consumers of mobile apps. So, so yeah, yeah, I think we can have a try. <laughs> So I think that I could probably sit here for hours and talk to you about this. Um, but, uh, I mean, in terms of moving forward, it seems that there are some real challenges just around the corner as well. So um, we've, we've lived in, a, in this um, world where we've been told that sticky is good, retain the, the, the user's attention. But now with the advent of IoT and we've got more devices going into, into the home or you've got a device where um, in your car, which is getting uh, uh, better and better, um, that, that's the kind of thing that you don't want the consumer's attention to be drawn to constantly, um, but you need it to do just enough, um, or you need it to, to nail exactly um, all, all of the right elements whilst, um, whilst kind of switching off or, or, or just almost not being there in the, in the customer's eyes. So that's a real challenge for um, people going forward. Yeah, this is more. Um, this is both a problem for for UX designers, but also for users, of course, because it is really a, a focus problem. For the users, it reflects badly on their own life because if they are constantly interrupted, and we also see it with the emails, for example, many people are, you know, have developed a, a sort of addiction to checking the emails every few minutes or so, and this is very dangerous for the for the quality of life, basically. So, on, on a certain level, it is a user problem. I mean, they, they have to uh, learn to, to face this problem, which is a focus problem, really, and uh, have to learn to cut on stimulus that aren't really you know, necessary yeah. and, and are, yeah, really are dangerous so at the end of the day. For the UX designers, of course, you have to expose all the possible um, settings that enable people to customize their, their experience. Of course, you, you don't want to be the one who doesn't mm, push notifications to, to users because you have to do re-engagement. So. But you have to find a good compromise, a good trade-off between you know, trying to reach the user 
and trying to reach the user at the right time. Because uh, if you don't reach the user at the right times, but at bad times, then probably you will lose this user. But yeah, you have to find a compromise and give choice. So settings, settings, settings to switch off, switch on the things that you really care about. Finally, um, if you had to point people in the direction of um, two or three um, of what you, you consider the apps that like, the, the UX has just been nailed on, um, best practices? This is that? a difficult question. I didn't really want to make, you know. <laughs> That's fine. We can cut there and uh, we, can, yeah. we can finish it off. That's cool. Okay. Perfect. Thanks very much. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's okay. We'll cut that last bit.